High up in the lush green mountains of Sufra St. Lucia is a rustic farm where farmers are being initiated into a farming practice which will positively impact their economic well-being, their health, their soil and also the marine life miles away in the Sufra Bay. We have the Ridge to Reef theme so we're looking at um, focusing on sustainable methods on the land that would not have too detrimental an effect on the sea. This is the Emerald Farm in Soufre, owned by the world-renowned and Chasne Jade Mountain Hotel. The hotel has repurposed an old copper house as part of an initiative to reduce on the importation of mushrooms and make available to their guests a supply of fresh, locally cultivated mushrooms. So we converted that into a mushroom growing room. Um, we have put an air conditioner there, we control the temperature there. Uh, that's a clean room also. We bring in spawns from the States for different varieties of mushrooms. We have initially started off with buttons, oysters, morel and shiitake. The Ministry of Agriculture has been instrumental in providing technical support and guidance, with technical support also from the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA, and the German Development Corporation, GIZ, through its Caribbean Aquaterrestrial Solutions program, CATS. So what we do is assist in providing training, providing our partners, whether it be with equipment or whatever else is needed to help them build their capacity so they can then put into, into practice those initiatives. The Emerald Farm is equipped with a laboratory for mushroom cultivation and served as the training ground for a select group of farmers. They are expected to start growing mushrooms, a crop foreign to most of them and fairly new to the local menu. It's not part of the local cuisine here and uh, people are not very used to uh, eating mushrooms. They wonder what it is. It's a fungus after all. But then um, slowly but steadily um, the island is getting exposed to mushroom. It's there in fine dining and stuff like that, pizzas. So we thought, uh, why don't we grow it too? Sanusha doesn't have a culture of using edible mushrooms. However, our grandparents did eat them because we have oyster mushrooms, we have portabella and buttons that grow in our environment and the older people, the older folk, knew the mushrooms. We are going to be growing enough so that we can self-sustain for our resort. Our idea is not to sell anywhere out in the open market. The Anshasne Jade Mountain Resorts, in seeking to reduce on the importation of large quantities of exotic mushrooms, decided to grow its own. This is not an ordinary farm building. Mushrooms need sanitized conditions, controlled humidity, and cool temperatures to grow. Mushrooms need lower temperatures. Um, it's tough to grow them by the seeds. It tends to be very expensive. However, in these higher elevations, it has a lot of potential. This room is air conditioned. Everything that goes in there must be purified through this originally built sterilizer. The growing media and the bags to store it must be cleaned in this tightly sealed drum. Further sterilizing takes place when the growing media is inoculated. Again, heat is being used here to reduce contamination of the work being done. This may be a seemingly complicated process. However, it becomes simpler once the farmer gets acquainted with the procedures. There is another room, the fruiting room. This too has to be temperature and humidity controlled. Scott Kerr, who is part of the mushroom cultivation team at Emerald Farm, has constructed an evaporative cooling system utilizing extractor fans blowing air through a soaked wall of recycled, locally obtained cuscus grass to ensure the right conditions for growing mushrooms. The simplest way to describe evaporative cooling is basically running air through a damp medium as the air passes through the medium, uh, the water evaporates and that creates a cooling effect. The experience and expertise being developed in this pilot project in the Sufra Mountains is being shared with a select group of farmers who it is hoped will take mushroom cultivation seriously. We are hoping that we would be able to get at least three of these farmers to be viable mushroom producers. Um, mushrooms are an explosive market. There's so many species that can be done and the market is so broad. So we got them here, we had a, a week of uh, training, how to grow right from scratch all the way up to finishing stages. 
The nearby Bellevue Farmers Cooperative has been intimately linked to this project and is now producing and supplying the wood chips needed to produce the growing media for mushrooms. Bellevue Farmers would support them by way of production of uh, substrate material, so they would be using the shredder, which they received under the program, to produce the growing material for the mushrooms. And um, Aunt Chastney would provide them with the spawn or the, the seeds, quote unquote, for the production of the mushrooms for a certain period of time. There are millions of dollars to be made from mushroom cultivation. Currently, there are only two farmers seriously cultivating mushrooms in St. Lucia. Both are in the north of the island. They have not been able to meet demand from hotels and restaurants on the island. Looking at the statistics locally in terms of the importation of mushroom, we are in the millions of dollars. So um, if we can get farmers to um, get into the production of mushroom, it will augur well in terms of um, import substitution for the country. The CATS program and the Ministry of Agriculture have also supported the mushroom cultivation project because it helps build climate change resilience. It can be cultivated whether conditions are extremely dry or wet. It's called climate smart farming. Traditional forms of farming have you dependent on whether it rains, whether there's sun, whether there's water. With the mushrooms you can actually do it in isolation of all these external factors. The mushroom cultivation project is a win-win for all involved. It is climate smart and provides opportunities for farmers to earn millions of dollars in income. At the same time, it encourages and supports composting activities of the Bellevue Farmers Cooperative.